Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to a world of laughter, learning, and entertainment. Welcome aboard as we set sail on a journey through Carl Gustav Fleischer. Carl Gustav Fleischer, 28 December 1883, 19 December 1942, was a Norwegian general and the first land commander to win a major victory against the Germans in the Second World War. Having followed the Norwegian government into exile at the end of the Norwegian campaign, Fleischer committed suicide after being bypassed for appointment as commander-in-chief of the Norwegian armed forces in exile and being sent to the insignificant post as commander of Norwegian forces in Canada. Turning our focus to early and personal life, let's explore its key elements. Fleischer was born in Jena Rectory, now Rhone, in Sertrundelig, as the son of the Church of Norway pastor Karl Edvard Fleischer and Johann Sophie Fergsted. After his father died, Fleischer moved with his mother to grow up in Trondheim. His childhood home was one characterized by Christianity, simplicity, and frugality. His ancestors had migrated from Elbing in East Prussia to Norway, first with Tobias Fleischer, who found a position in Kongsberg. The current lineage is descended from Tobias' nephew Hermann Reinhold Fleischer, who also had notable children in Denmark. Carl Gustav Fleischer was a descendant of Hermann's son Philipp Johann Fleischer. Notable relatives include Philipp's brother Balzer Fleischer and grandnephew Palmer Fleischer, and Carl Gustav's brother, Bishop Andreas Fleischer. Carl Gustav Fleischer was also a more distant relative of Carl August Fleischer, Nana Fleischer. Agnes Fleischer and August Fleischer. Carl Gustav Fleischer married Antony Tony Charlotte Heigen in 1919 in Christiania. In his spare time, Fleischer enjoyed watercolor painting and trout fishing. In the upcoming section, we'll be dissecting pre Second World War and exploring its implications in greater detail. Motivated by economic uncertainties, Fleischer joined the Norwegian Military Academy and graduated as the second best student in 1905. The academy instilled in young Fleischer a strong belief in that the first task of a military officer was to defend his country and that regulations were to be considered standing orders in critical situations. In 1917 Fleischer made the rank of captain. In 1919-1923 he was the staff officer of the Norwegian 6th Division before becoming commanding officer of the 14th Infantry Regiment IR-14 in Mosfin. While serving in North Norway Fleischer became an avid writer of military manuals and worked continually on developing the Norwegian armed forces in line with the special prerequisites caused by the Norwegian nature and society. From 1909 to 1933 he held various positions in the Norwegian General Staff. In addition he served as a captain and commanded Company 4 of the Norwegian Royal Guards in Chief of the Commanding General's Staff of Adjutants in 1933-1934 and as a teacher at the Norwegian Defence Staff College in. He also edited the military journal Norsk Militat Didskrift. During his time at the General Staff, Fleischer warned of the possibility of a surprise attack on central areas of Norway. He also stated that the best way of confronting such an attack was a combination of defending coastal outposts while the main forces mobilized in rear areas in the interior of the country. In 1930 he was promoted to the rank of Major, and in 1934 became a Colonel, assuming command of the Sir Holigeland Regiment Infantry Regiment 14. In the next segment, we'll be exploring background and strategy and its implications for our subject matter. On 16 January 1939, Fleischer was made Major General General Major and Commanding Officer of the Norwegian 6th Division, the position that would lead him to become the first Allied General to defeat the Wehrmacht in a head-on land confrontation. January 1940 saw Fleischer appointed by royal resolution as commander-in-chief of North Norway in case of war. After the winter war between Finland and Russia broke out in November 1939, the 6th Division was mobilized and Fleischer repeatedly took the initiative to encourage the Norwegian government to increase the country's military readiness in North Norway. Included amongst these initiatives were wide-ranging measures against the region's communists. Fleischer's distrust of the Soviet Union continued to show itself throughout the following Norwegian campaign in 1940. 
when he kept substantial forces at the Soviet border in eastern Finnmark despite a desperate need of reinforcements at the front line at Narvik against Madge. General Edward Dittel's Jeberg Zeta forces. In 1940, following the German invasion of Norway, General Fleischer was appointed commander-in-chief of the Norwegian Armed Forces in North Norway. At the time of the attack on 9 April 1940, Fleischer was at Vads in Finnmark as part of an inspection journey together with his chief of staff, Major Odd Lindbock Larsen. When message of the invasion reached him, the area was in the middle of a ferocious blizzard. Due to the extreme weather, Fleischer could not leave Vads either by Hertigruten ship or naval aircraft and had to stay overnight. County Governor of Finnmark Hans Gabrielsen invited Fleischer to stay at the governor's mansion. After discussing the situation with Gabrielsen, Fleischer managed to set off for Troms the next day, arriving there by naval aircraft after flying in terrible conditions. From Troms he issued orders for a total civilian and military mobilization and declared Northern Norway a theatre of war. He handed over most of the civilian powers to the respected county governors in Troms and Finnmark, Hans Gabrielsen taking all civilian power in Northern Norway after the death of the county governor of Troms a few days after the invasion. Flesher's strategic plan was to first wipe out the German forces at Narvik and then transfer his division to Nordland to meet a German advance from Trundelig. Fleischer valued offensive actions against enemy forces, using the unique nature of the Norwegian terrain to carry out attacks against an enemy's flanks and rear. General Fleischer had already in 1934 opposed the concept of fighting delaying actions while waiting for Allied reinforcements a tactic on which General Otto Rouge relied during his defence of the vital eastern Norway region. As we progress, let's zoom in on operations in 1940 and examine its role in shaping our overall narrative. As commander of the 6th Division, Madge, General Carl Gustav Fleischer coordinated Norwegian, French, Polish and British forces in the recapturing of Narvik on 28 May from Madge. General Edward Dittel's Austro-German 3rd Mountain Division. The victory was accomplished despite shifting Allied strategies and leadership. Following the evacuation of southern Norway, Fleischer was embroiled in conflicts with the political and military leadership arriving from the abandoned southern parts of the country. The general's hard-headed and uncompromising style did not help in this regard. Narvik was the first major Allied infantry victory in the Second World War. Unfortunately for the Norwegians, following the German invasion of France and the Low Countries on 10 May 1940, the Allied task force was withdrawn in early June. Without the support from the Allies, the Norwegian army alone would not be able to defend its positions and a capitulation agreement for mainland Norway was signed. The Germans recouped Narvik on 9 June. As the Norwegian forces in mainland Norway were about to surrender, General Fleischer was ordered to follow King Håkon VII and the cabinet Nidavs Vold into exile in the United Kingdom, having been made commander of the Norwegian army in exile on 7 June 1940. In the company of his wife he left Norway on 8 June, on board the patrol vessel. Now, let's shift our perspective and explore exile through a fresh lens unlocking new perspectives. During his exile in the United Kingdom, General Fleischer quickly built up a Norwegian infantry brigade based in Dumfries, Scotland from June 1940. However, he soon got at odds with the Norwegian political leadership in exile due to his strong-headed attitudes and unwillingness to compromise. He also became controversial in factions of the cabinet due to his support of British commando raids on the Norwegian coast, even stating his willingness to personally participate in the attacks on the German occupying forces in Norway. While stationed in the UK, he received a number of Allied awards. Among these were the Polish Virtuti Militari for Bravery, the French Croix de Guerre, and appointment by the British as a Knight Commander of the Order of the Bath. Most likely because of a personal antagonism due to this fact, General Fleischer was bypassed when the exiled government of Prime Minister Johann Niedersvold in 1942 decided to recreate the post of Commander-in-Chief of the Norwegian Armed Forces. 
This post had existed temporarily during the 1940 campaign, but General Otto Ruge, who had been commander-in-chief during the campaign, stayed in Norway and surrendered with his troops. Instead of Fleischer, the cabinet promoted Major Wilhelm von Tang and Hunstein, the young defense attitude in Helsinki, Finland directly to General and gave him the post. In response to this act, Fleischer delivered his resignation. The cabinet ordered General Fleischer to take up a new post as commander of Norwegian forces in Canada. Apart from the Royal Norwegian Air Forces training base Little Norway near Toronto, which was already headed by Ole Reisted, and a school for merchant marine gunners at Lunenburg near Halifax, Nova Scotia, there were no Norwegian forces in Canada. A plan to create a Norwegian army in Canada of expatriate Norwegian Americans came to nothing. Before leaving for Canada, Fleischer inspected the Norwegian garrison on the distant Norwegian island Jan Mayen in the Atlantic Ocean. The general concluded that the garrison was too small to defend anything more than the midsection of the island, leaving several landing beaches open to the Germans during the relatively calm summer months. Based on his observations, Fleischer reported that the garrison should be reinforced during the summer, a small garrison being sufficient during winter. He also inspected the Norwegian forces based on Iceland. Without further ado, let's move on to the topic of suicide and aftermath. On 1 December 1942, General Fleischer was ordered to the position of military attach to Washington District of Columbia. This was another obvious humiliation, since usually officers of the ranks of Major or Lieutenant Colonel served in this role. Being too much for him to swallow, he shot himself with his own gun through the heart on 19 December 1942. He was found by his adjutant Lieutenant Richard Brink Johnson who brought the urn with the General's ashes to London in a Liberator aircraft. In London Brink Johnson was ordered to keep the circumstances of Flesher's death secret. Only in 1995 did Brink Johnson speak out, stating that in his opinion Fleischer had taken his own life in sorrow of being set aside and not being needed by anyone. Still disputed today. It is thought that one of the reasons for sending him to Canada was that he favoured a series of coastal raids against Norway to hamper German use of the occupied nation. Fleischer also wanted to build substantial army forces abroad and employ them in active operations against the German occupying forces in Norway, something that was in direct conflict with the more passive strategy favoured by Cabinet Nigerdsvold. The prevailing view in the rest of the cabinet was to build air and naval forces that could be used directly with allied forces, as they feared such raids would provoke the Germans into severe punitive actions against the local populace, such as they did after the Tel Aviv incident. Hasted Gen. Flesher's Gate, Bod General Flesher's Gate, Budafoss General Flesher's Vig and Eichsmarker General Flesher's V all have streets named after the general. Remember to follow me on social media for behind-the-scenes content and updates.